Hello and welcome back for another video and welcome to Learn Data Fabric. I'm Will and in today's video we've got a very special one for you. Now we're going to be deep diving into data flows and I'm going to be building an end-to-end -end project that shows you exactly how to use data flows within Microsoft Fabric and we're going to be seeing some new ways that you can use data flows within the Fabric context that you can't really use in the Microsoft Power BI data flows. And what I'm going to be doing is using data from our world in data. Specifically, it's this one. So it's the which sources does our global energy come from? How much is low carbon? And if you haven't used our world in data before, it's a really interesting website. I recommend you have a look. It basically collates lots of different data sets about our world. And you can browse by topic and it describes what's going on in the world through data. So on this page, we've got this graph here that I'm going to be trying to recreate within Power BI. And what you can do with any of these charts in our world in data is download the data that goes behind it. So we're going to be downloading the data. I've put it into an Azure storage account. And our goal for this project is to first extract the data from Azure. So we're going to bring it into a data flow. We're going to have a look at it and transform it so that we can recreate this chart here. So there's going to be lots of steps to this. Make sure you follow along. And yeah, let's get going with a real world project using data flows. OK, so here we are. We are in the data factory experience. And I've set up a workspace creatively named data factory. And we're going to start by creating a new data flow. So we're going to be using this to extract our data from Azure. So we're going to be going to get data and then more, looking for the connections. And in Azure, we've got lots of different things to select from. My data is in an Azure blob. So I've already set up a connection to my Azure blob storage. And it's using the account key. And to set that up, you just go into your storage account and scroll down to access keys. And then you can find this key here that you just copy into the connection when you're creating it within Fabric, within your data flow. So let's click on Next. That will all go through. Here we've got this container here. And we can see, right, this is our container. And these are our blobs. We've got the CSV files, there's two of them. We only need one of them. But let's click on Create. OK, so now we've got our data within our data flow. So we can start to transform it and extract this data. So first of all, I'm going to just filter out this file here, because this is the only one I want. Then we can extract the content of that CSV file by clicking on this little button here and it transforms it from a CSV into the actual data contained within the CSV. That's what that looks like now. Let's click OK. That looks good. And we're going to be doing some transformations on this. Firstly, we just want to load it into our lake house because what I'm going to be doing, I don't know much about this data. Really, I want to explore the data a bit and it's difficult to do that within a data flow. But to do that first, one of the limitations that you have to bear in mind is that we can't write data, specifically column names that have spaces in them, into a lake house. So the first step is to rename our columns. OK, so we can begin to see the structure of the data now. We've got the source name that's come through from our data flow. We've got various entities, so these are for example, continents or countries in some cases. It's a bit of a mix, which is a bit annoying. Uh, we can't really do country by country comparisons very easily. We've got the year, and then we've got the amount of energy produced by each source. So coal, oil, gas in terrible hours, I think it was. So now we've had a bit of a look at our data. Now what I want to do is not do much more transformations with it yet. I'm just going to store it in a bronze lake house. So I'm just going to be getting the raw data. I've made very minimal transformations, enough for me to save it into a lake house. And I'm going to save it 
into our lake house like this. So in the bottom right hand corner, we can add a data destination. Add it to a lake house, which already I've, I've already set up within this workspace. And it's called data factory. And I've got this bronze lake house here. And I'm going to call my table energy from data flow. Let's click next. And we can do replace. Just check that the column mapping is correct. That looks fine. It might struggle with this, but we'll see. With the source.name. So I might have to remove that, but what we'll do is we'll publish and we see how we get on. Okay, so I haven't given it a very good name though. It's just called Dataflow3, it's this one. And when you publish it, it will run for the first time. So it shouldn't take very long. I don't think this data set's very large. I think it's about 9,000 rows or something. Okay, so we're back in the refresh history for our Dataflow3 and we can see that it has succeeded. It took one minute and 12 seconds to run this pipeline. So let's open the SQL endpoint for the Bronze Lake House and just have a look at the data we've got here. Okay, so you can see our data has now arrived into this lake house. You know, we've got very similar, or exactly the same structure as we had in our Power Query, in our data flow. And the reason I've done this is because I want to just click on new report here and just have a look at the data, do some exploratory data analysis just to understand it a bit better. Because if you want to recreate this chart here, then we need to understand the data in a bit more detail and just have a little, little bit of a play with it first. So we've got our data set here. This is one of the benefits of Fabric and Power BI integrated into our environment, we can quickly kind of use data flows, visualize it in Power BI, all of this in one kind of seamless way. So what I want to do is just explore the data a little bit. Perhaps I want to have a look at the entities here. And I want to have a look at just what the counts are really. So how many records are there for each one? Is it, are they all the same? Is there some records or some entities that have less data? We can see that there is now. So some of these countries have less records, which makes me think, okay, maybe it's uh, different years. Obviously, the USSR has less records. So I'm just going to copy that and have a look at, okay, is it the year? Okay, so for, it looks like the data goes up to 2021 and down early as far as 1965. So that gives us a bit of an idea about the types of data we've got there. Now I notice in the one that we're trying to copy, we have this world. So we're only really interested in the world category. So what happens if we just add a filter to this page and only look at the world? Okay, so now we've got our world. And so with this chart here, we're nearly all of the way there, really. We are we've got one bar and we want to categorize it by the different energy types. So currently, currently that's not really possible with the structure of our data. We've got different uh, energy types in different columns in our data set. And really we want to have one column for all of these different energy types or one column called energy types and one column with their values because then that will enable us to use the legend and we can split this big bar up into the different energy types. So that's a bit of an exploration of our data. Let's go and do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new data flow. Now you could just add this logic into the old data flow but I'm showing some different ways of working with data flows here. So in this data flow, we're gonna do get data. And this time we're gonna read it from Microsoft Fabric itself. We're gonna be looking into that lake house, the bronze lake house where we've stored this data. And so here you go. 
This is the bronze lake house. Let's open this up. And this is the table we want, energy from data flow. Okay, so there's over 300 transformations that we can do within data flows thanks to Power Query. All of these different options of removing columns, keeping row, moving rows, filtering, split columns, merging, appending queries, all these different things, which we won't be going into in this lesson, but we are going to be tidying up this data a bit. So this source column, we don't really need. So I'm going to be removing this column. We want to keep the entity and we want to keep the code. And obviously the year is very important. But what we want to do is transform these columns here so that it's only two columns, our attribute, which is energy type, and our values. And the way of doing that in Power Query in these data flows is if we go to the transform tab, then you have this really useful function called unpivot columns. And this is probably my favorite part about data flows is to unpivot columns because you can do it obviously in Python, in a Synapse Data Engineering Notebook. Uh, it's actually more difficult than it should be to do this in SQL. So this specific transformation is a really good one to do in Power Query in data flows. So what you can see, I've just unpivoted these columns and now we've got for each year and each country, we've got eight rows in the data set. Previously it was one row. And so there's a row for each of these different energy types with their responding values. So let's just change this to something a bit more user friendly. We'll leave that one as value. Okay, and now we want to set the data destination. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this to a different lake house. So I'm using a kind of medallion architecture here, whereby in the bronze lake house, we're just going to be capturing the raw data as it comes in from our source. In the silver lake house, we're going to be putting our transformed and cleaned and curated data sets. So again, we're creating the connection to a lake house. But this time we're going to be choosing our Silver Lake House. And we're going to be calling it Transformed Energy from Dataflow. Obviously we've got different columns here now. Let's save this. And we can publish. So let's just wait for that one to load and I'll come back in a second. Okay, so here we are. We are in our Silver Lake House now. We've got our transformed data. And you can see what I've actually done is added another filter since the last step. And I've just brought in the world data set because we're only really interested in the world stuff. So we've got our data now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the SQL endpoint and I'm going to find our table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a report now and try and build this visual that we have in our world of data within our Power BI report. So we brought in our transform data now and what we want is to grab the entity which is only world at this moment and now we can use the values column as our x-axis. Okay, so I've brought in the data and we're just doing the entity on the y-axis and the sum of the value on the x-axis, which I'll go into in a bit more detail in a moment. And what we're gonna do is add in the legend for the energy type. So now we've got coal, gas, geo, hydro, nuclear, and solar and wind. Okay, so we've brought in all of our data now. We've got our entity, which is world, and we've broken it up using the legend into the different energy types, coal, gas, geo, hydro. We haven't got the same order as this visual. Maybe that can be an extension to this project for a future rendition. But you can see we haven't quite got it right because currently this is only showing 2021 data. So it's about 1,002 or 162,000 terawatt hours. 
So the slight modification is we need to use this year. Uh, let's just grab this. So yeah, there you go. So now we're at 162. And perhaps this isn't the best filter type. What we can do is edit this slicer to I don't know, Power BI doesn't really give us the option to do a slicer in the same way very easily as we've got there. But perhaps a better way of visualizing this to see how this is developed through time would actually be to use something like this. And this isn't really a Power BI tube tutorial, it was mainly about the data flow. But if you see now, we can, if we visualize this by our year, then there we go, we see a bit of a time series. Just to summarize what we've done here, we've taken the core data from an Azure Blob Storage account, we've pulled it into a Bronze Lake House, we've done some very minimal transformations first, just to get it into that lake house. Then we visualized it in Power BI, found out what transformations we need to make to recreate this Our World in Data Graph, and then finally, we've done some unpivots um, and some tidying up of the columns just to show some of the functionality of a data flow. And then we visualized it again and improved the visualization in Power BI. So that's just an end to end project using data flows and Power BI and Fabric. And I hope you can begin to see the power of data flows within Microsoft Fabric now. I think they're much more useful than they used to be in Power BI because we can load data into any fabric item. So that's really powerful. So I hope you enjoyed this end-to-end -end project. Hopefully it's given you some ideas of how to use data flows in the future. And there'll be many more videos like this coming. So if you're not subscribed already, then make sure you subscribe, like this video and leave a comment on what you thought about this mini project. In the next video, we'll be looking at the data pipeline. So we'll be looking at the other side of data factory and we'll be looking at the high level overview and I'll be doing another project similar to this one, but using data pipelines. So see you then.